say being a follower of Jesus is it's not always peaches and cream. Sometimes it involves stinky feet. Sometimes it involves doing what we don't want to do, like forgiving those who betray you, serving those who think they are indeed just a little better than you. And sometimes it means digging deep to find the good in a person. In our gospel lesson today, Jesus uses actions before words as he teaches his disciples how they should relate to one another, and in return, how we should relate to one another. It was a day or so before Passover, and they were having a meal, and you know it was customary for the host of the meal to provide a servant to wash the feet of the guest. Now remember, they walked, they wore sandals, and they walked on the dusty roads. <clears throat> Can you remember back to this summer when you're wearing flip-flops and you walk through lots of places and you take them off? Well, theirs would have been that bad, if not more. I just can't help but think, though, that the disciples would have noticed that no one was there to wash their feet. That was a task that was set aside for the lowest of slaves. Because, you see, even back then, there was a pecking order. It was derived from the way chickens have a tendency to set up a social order where the strongest one picks on the weaker one. Or more correctly, pecks. The most dominant chicken will peck on the head of the weaker chickens. And then the next most dominant will peck on everyone but the one who's more dominant than him. And then it goes down and down until you get to that lowest chicken. I remember growing up, we had a dachshund, and he loved to chase chickens. <laughs> of course, we had chickens, too. One day, I heard him yelping, and there was a hen on his back, pecking his head. <laughs> I'm assuming he was on the lower end of that pecking order. <laughs> but you see, none of the disciples were willing to put themselves in that lowest position. Maybe they were thinking, you know what, if I do this once, I'm going to be doing it forever. No one stepped up. They decided they would rather eat with dirty, stinky feet. So now, can you see why these persons would have, who have followed Jesus for three years, who know him as, as teacher and master and Lord, would balk at him washing their feet? They knew who he was. They knew where he was in that pecking order. Yet Jesus used a visual parable, showing them how they were to treat themselves and others. If the Lord, the Son of God, could wash their feet, they in turn ought to wash one another's feet. There's a legend about a king, and he was setting aside a special day in his a special day in, in the kingdom where he was going to honor the um, greatest in his kingdom. So there were four to choose from. The first was a wealthy philanthropist and he had given so freely to all those in need. The second was a celebrated physician who had offered dedicated service to the sick in the kingdom for many years. The third was a distinguished judge who had known, was known for his wisdom, his fairness, and his wise decisions. And fourth was an elderly uh, woman. People were surprised to see her there because she had such a humble manner as well as being dressed rather humbly. She really didn't look the part of the greatest subject in the kingdom. Most thought she had little chance. However, there was something about her. A look of love in her face and an understanding in her eyes. Her quiet confidence. The king was intrigued and puzzled by her presence. He asked who she was and the answer came, you see the philanthropist, the doctor, and the judge? <clears throat> Well, she was their teacher. 
After washing their feet, Jesus said, Do you know what I've done for you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you speak correctly, because I am. If I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you must wash others too. I have given you an example, and just as I've done, you must also do. No more pecking order. No sense of one being better than the other. God's Son was sent to earth to teach and to serve. And that can teach what all people need to know. That each and every person is of value and worth. In the words of Jocelyn Miller, there is so much good in the worst of us and so much bad in the best of us that it hardly behooves any of us to talk about the rest of us. <laughs> <laughs> Later in the book of Galatians, Paul writes, there is no longer Jew or Gentile, slave or free, male or female. We are all united in Christ Jesus. We were saved by, the, by Jesus, not because of all the righteous things we've done, but because of God's mercy, mercy that is shown to not only ourselves, but to others. Now the words I say to you today can just roll right off your back like water off a duck. <laughs> Coming to church can be seen as you're doing your duty and good works as earning your wings. We think that there are specific things that we need to do to make it to heaven. Duty won't change your heart, but it is a place to start yet not a place to get stuck. I ask you to take a look at this clip from the movie Up. Four X optical zoom. Schneider lens. Photo print. SD card. Good afternoon. My name is Russell, and I am a wilderness explorer in Tribe 54. Sweat Lodge 12, are you in need of any assistance today, sir? No. I could help you cross the street. No. I could help you cross your yard. No. I could help you cross your porch. No. Well, I gotta help you cross something. Uh, no, I'm doing fine.
point is that we were made to be in relationship with one another and with God. Remember the last line of today's gospel? Since you know these things, one translation says, you will be happy if you do them. You know, we're currently reading the Bible in a year, same book, same page. We are offering Bible 101, where you can come at any time to learn the, some basics. We have several Bible studies going. You, many of you have been through Alpha and some of you through Disciple Studies. Yet if we don't absorb that message, take those words into our hearts, we're still eating with dirty feet. We're not cleansed and our hearts are not changed. We come away with only head knowledge instead of a servant's heart, which is where God would like us to be. Where what you do is a way of life, a way of life which brings others to know the love of God. I need to ask you a question. What would you rather do? Wash somebody's feet or have somebody wash your feet? Mm -hmm. That's the way we are. It's really harder for us to accept than it is to give. I had a relative this year who got frustrated with me because I sent her a Christmas gift. <laughs> she felt that I was forcing her to reciprocate because she had trouble accepting receiving a gift freely. So often we do the same thing with God. So often we fail to accept God's gift of grace and salvation. Maybe because it's free. Maybe because we think we have to earn it. Maybe because we think we don't need it. I really feel there's a correlation between being able to accept gifts from others and our ability to accept the life-saving gift of salvation. Sometimes we come into church just far enough to get a sprinkling of faith. It's like sitting there with your gift and slowly peeling away the tape. Don't worry about tearing the wrapping paper. Dig in and find the peace and the joy and the love that you've been so wary of. Be aware and be willing to be part of the body of Christ. We all get dirty. We all get grimy and grungy from time to time. And we all need others to help us, others to wash our feet. To remind us that our spiritual journey is not a solo flight. You are responsible for yourself and for the journey of others. We are in life together. We are called to help one another to know the love of Christ. For we are all Christians. You are one in Christ. And we are bound together through Jesus Christ. A couple weeks ago in Children's Church, it was um, Martin Luther King Jr. weekend. And I was talking with some of with the kids, and I was telling them about not so many years ago when there were two sets of water fountains, two sets of uh, restrooms, and different schools, and how if a white person got on the bus, they had to get, uh, the, a black person would have to give up their seat. Some of them were indignant; they could not believe it, and I loved seeing this reaction from them. One little one crossed her arms. And she said, I would have sat there on that bus and I would have said no. <laughs> and the older one said, well, they would have put you in jail. She said, I don't care. <laughs> We're all children of God. Amen. Can people tell by the things you say and by the way you live that God is alive and well today in our world? Christianity is a life we live. And together, we First we're called into a heart relationship with Jesus, and then a heart relationship with one another. The first calls for faith, and the latter calls for us following the example that Jesus gave. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. Jesus exhibited for us what our place is in this world. It's not above, it's not below, it's not over or better than anyone else. Jesus lifted the underdogs, those who were put down. He washed the disciples' feet and said, go and do likewise. 
What would our world look like if we lifted others rather than put them down? I have a challenge for us. Can we each go 24 hours without saying anything unkind about or to another person? 24 hours. Let's just give it a try. Because, you know, if we can't, we may have a problem. If someone can't go 24 hours without alcohol, we, we say they have a problem with alcohol. Someone can't go 24 hours without a cigarette, they're addicted to nicotine. What's it say about us if we can't go without saying an unkind word for 24 hours? Let's see ourselves lifting others. What would it look like? What would it feel like to create ties that bind, not ties that tangle? Ties that weave us together instead of making knots. It may start to look like this. I'm going to ask the ushers, and I should have asked you sooner, if, um, here's, what I'm, here's what I'm envisioning. We'll see how it works. But I would like for your, uh, the ushers to lead you up and say 10 people on this side, 10 people on this side. Lee, I didn't tell you either, but you're the other foot wiper. <laughs> oh, where I probably lost her. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to wipe your shoes. And then I'm going to give you the chance to wipe the next person's shoes. And the next person. And then the last person can wipe mine or these shoes. And then you're going to take your wiping cloth and tie it. This is, these were supposed to be kites, but I couldn't find any. And tie your, this around here, any of these balloons. And we'll talk about that later. What, you want this side? All righty. So let's come on up. Matt, would you play a little something? If we were to release these balloons and I didn't have the heavy claws on them, they would rise to the ceiling, but they couldn't go any further. But if we took them outside these walls, oh, the distance they could cover. That's what Christ wants us to do. That's what happens when we wash the feet of others. When we're in community of people bound together through Jesus Christ. Mother Teresa had this quote. Let no one ever come to you without leaving better and happier. Be a loving expression of God's kindness, with kindness in your face, kindness in your eyes, and kindness in your smile. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we praise you for the greatness of your love in sending your Son among us to serve us as serve, to serve us and to be an example, to teach us. The love that moved him to serve with such humility and devotion humbles us. It makes us all wonder. And it reminds us of how much we fall short of his example. Thank you for this opportunity to learn more about the true heart of a joyful Christian. Lord, we lift our hearts to you. We love you. And we want to serve you. Amen.